Worst case scenario is we close below 278. 278 will be the 50 day moving average. If we close below 278, again, you don't have to look far, right? And this is kind of the, whole, the first kind of um, step to being a technical analysis trader. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, before we get started, and a lot of things have changed uh, since our Wednesday broadcast, I want to wish everybody uh, a very happy and healthy uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, a happy new year, health and happiness to all. Again, at the end of the day, uh, everybody's trying to provide for their family, but our health and our happiness uh, is obviously the most important thing. And without it, we absolutely uh, have nothing. So if you are new to the channel, uh, again, we do broadcast uh, Monday through Wednesday. Uh, Thursday night, I have off, just kind of uh, recharge my brain for Friday session and then there's a recording on the weekend if you kindly so can do so continue and we appreciate it support the channel uh, be kindly enough to uh, click a like and if you are new uh, subscribe to the channel and so you can get updated when we are uploaded so let's talk about it so last time we spoke was uh, Wednesday uh, Wednesday's uh, broadcast right Wednesday's broadcast uh, we talked about and not only just Wednesday we continue to talk about how going into the two big events uh, for this past week, uh, we had the CPI number that was incredibly volatile, uh, and we also had uh, the Fed minutes who, who promptly uh, followed the next day. And the one thing, if you've been watching this broadcast just in the last month, you know, you don't have to go back longer. We've noticed one thing: uh, ever since that last CPI number, every major event after has been kind of depleting the action or depleting. Uh, you know, the integrity of that initial move over and over and over again. So we had the CPI move, the initial CPI move uh, for November. We rallied, we sold it off to the bottom of the range. Then Powell came, uh, talked about, you know, talked about basically the same thing. They always talk about the language has not changed. And it kind of will segue uh, into the Fed minutes in, in a few minutes. But, you know, we had that big 4.4% you know, rally in the queues. Uh, only to get faded again. Only to get faded again. So you know this. This was something. You know, once is okay. Twist is a coincidence. Now the third and the fourth time, we're already. You know, we're already onto it. We want to see uh, if the trend continues. And we had the the CPI uh, number for December. If you guys remember, a massive thirty second move in the futures. We challenged the top of the range of the candle. And guess what? Just like everything else that happened uh, for the last CPI number for the last uh, Powell. Uh, testimony, we faded again. So here came uh, here came the Fed minutes. And if you guys remember, uh, I basically just said, listen, the, the bulls have one bullet left. Okay, they keep on no matter what they're saying, uh, they're keeping on just doing the same thing. They're you know they're gapping into these events, and then they're selling them pretty aggressively. And unless Powell, you know, unless Powell said something really riveting, or you maybe even use the word 25 basis points at some point, I think everybody uh, really understood that the 50 basis points was just par for the course. We knew what was coming out. We knew uh, the language that was going to be used, right? We're watching inflation closely. We're trying to tame inflation closely. Uh, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure we curb inflation, yada, yada, yada. They didn't do anything that would surprise the market. And by the time the CPI fade happened, on uh, Tuesday, um, that you had you had the you had the Fed come out on Wednesday and got faded more. And the big then the big line in the sand was what we talked about in the beginning of the week, right? If we got down to the bottom of the range, the do or die scenario. I think it was only two or three videos uh, ago. If you can check it, you'll kind of see. Or, or Kyler uh, will kind of put a clip on it. We talked about the importance of the 278 level. The 278 level. Uh, was the 50-day moving average? It's a very, very big area. This is a, you know, this is kind of a a preview of what happens to come of who controls the 50-day moving average. And you know, you, you can clearly see, kind of going back in uh, just 2022. I, I think we spent, I would say, about 70, 80 uh, percent below the 50-day moving average um, in 2022. And you can you can kind of see it, just kind of going back. Uh, let's see here, kind of going back to here. So here's 2022. We started. 
January, right? January 5th was the first, I believe it was the first trading day uh, in 2022. Everybody see that light blue line? If you're, if, you're a, uh, if you're a brand new viewer to the channel, the 50-day moving average, this is what the light blue line is. So anything deemed over the 50-day moving average as a general, as a mass uh, conversational piece is considered bullish. And anything that's under the 50-day moving average is considered bearish. Again, nothing goes straight down. Uh, the market was never going to go straight down, just like the market over the 50-day moving average doesn't go straight up. But it gives you a general trade. It gives you a general trend. It gives you a, a general narrative that should be playing out. As you can see here, from the start of 2022, once we lost that light blue line, which was the 50-day moving average, we had a sell-off from January. Right? And again, there was definitely pockets of strength in between that. We had sell-offs going from January the 5th all the way up to, uh, let's see, January, February, March. March the 21st. So we're talking about nearly you know, two and a half, three months uh, worth of downward action underneath the 50-day moving average. And you can see what happened, right? Just, just, just as a visual, before you can get dive deep into the world of advanced technical analysis, you have to kind of use the eyeball test to kind of see the most basic forms. And once we reclaim back the 50 day moving average, it started at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days above the 50 day, but they lost it again, right? You see that? They lost it again. And guess what happened again? Again, it started a nasty cycle, right? It started a cycle uh, going from uh, April the 11th all the way, right? You can see how much downward pressure we've had uh, all the way to right around here, right? Right around. So we went from April 11th to July the 18th, and the bulls then reclaimed, right? Reclaimed the 50 day again, below bearish, above bullish. And look what happened, right? We had a little bit of a rally. We had a nice little rally here for the next month and a half. And guess what happens when we lost the 50 day, right? Here's the 50 day again, right? Keep this, you know, just again, sometimes the visual is the basic thing to kind of let you go of your, uh, of your reasoning or your, or, your, um, um, or your bias. So once we lost the 50 day moving average again, we lost it back on uh, August, uh, let's see here, June, July, August the 29th. Look what started again, right? We started again, another selling cycle, right? Another selling cycle all the way to right the last cpi right check this out the last cpi right first close over the 50-day moving average so we had another four months worth of selling and then finally we we, we, you know, we tried to consolidate for about a month and here is where we were uh as of thursday right first close below the 50-day moving average yesterday follow through so again you don't have to be you know a 30-year veteran, 50-year veteran of chart analysis, right? If you go through your eyeball test, you can see what generally happens when we are above the 50-day moving average is bullish, and we get below the 50-day moving average. Well, you kind of know where I'm getting at here. So uh, Wednesday, excuse me, Thursday, we closed below uh, the 50-day moving average, the first close. Friday was yesterday. We'll get to individual pivots in a second. Uh, we followed through. And now the key is what happens next, right? For the for the bulls to for the bulls to maintain any type of daylight, right, or daylight or or hope springs eternal for the next year, they desperately need to reclaim the 50 day, right? The 50 day right now is 278. Again, you'll see kind of the clippings of what Kyler will post or already did post when you're watching this video why important that 278 line was. So the bulls' job going into this week is to reclaim back the 278. They can reclaim this. The 278 back, then yeah, everything is fine. I think we'll start grinding back higher. But the longer the bulls, excuse me, the longer the bears build a base below the 50-day moving average, again, there's a high probability we start retracing and start tracing very aggressively. Like, like again, it's not going to be every single day. There's always dead cat bounces. Nothing goes straight up. Nothing goes straight down. But the general thesis is again over the 50-day bullish, under the 50-day bearish. Now again, for you, all you swing traders, are going to turn around and say, well, what's the difference? I'll just buy more. That's great. That's not for this channel, right? That's not for this channel. Uh, it, it, again, it is a, you know, look, if a zebra has a conversation with a thoroughbred, they kind of look alike, but they're two different conversations, right? A trader and investor are two different things. Do I think Amazon is going to be at $150 10 years from now? Absolutely. Do I think Amazon is going to be $150 tomorrow? Not so much. And that's the whole point of this channel. We're trying to get everybody from the active 
trading community ready for the next day, not what's going to happen or our opinion, what's going to happen for five, 10 years from now. So yes, do I think Apple is going to be at 210 years? Yes, we'll get to Apple in a second. Phenomenal move uh, last few days. Do I think, you know, do I think Tesla might be at 200 one day or might be at 50? Yes, 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 and yes, yes, yes. But we, it's not going to happen tomorrow. So the most important part is as active traders, again, like we say every single day, we look kind of, you know, we kind of uh, investigate the landscape, right? Investigate the data, see exactly where the, where the market tells us the best value is. And if that value gets confirmed the next day, that's great. Usually things will follow through. If not, guess what? We're wrong in our thesis. But again, being wrong theoretically, being wrong financially are two different things. It's okay to be wrong, right? Have an opinion, let that con opinion uh, confirm. But the data is the data. And as you can see here, just going back to 2022, what happens when you lose the 20, the, the 50 day moving average, you usually will see uh, a good amount of selling uh, to follow through. And again, the longer we build a base, and this is why it's so crucial for the bulls to, to, you know, to put up a fight, just don't lay down and die. The longer we build that base uh, below 278, the higher probability we're going to see the next uh, demand and the next demand zone uh, is all the way here to 260. So they better to start defending. They better start what kind of waking up you know, Monday, Tuesday, and start reclaiming back the 278 level, or the longer we build the base, or the longer, as I use the word build, that's kind of uh, the whole point of the PS60 theory, the longer the bears continue to build below that 278 level, what's going to happen is it's going to be a domino effect and everything, uh, not only in the NASDAQ 100 names, is going to start building uh, below the 50 day moving average. It's going to start dragging uh, everything as well. As you can see here on the IWM, right, on the IWM, it did the same thing, right? Here was the first close. Uh, below the 50 day moving average on Thursday, right? Look what happened on Friday. The Friday, it followed through. Spies, right? And this is just not to technology or uh, speculations name. Spies lost the 386. They lost the 50 day moving average. So for the bulls to, you know, to put up a fight, they have to reclaim it. Again, this, this isn't, this isn't a conversation of, uh, of, of, subjectivity that the bulls have to reclaim back the 50 day moving average or what's going to happen if you look at the what happened day two on the Qs, day two on the iwm right they reclaim down so uh the, the, for the bulls they need to reclaim the 386 level for the bears they just need to keep on building below this 386 for the next potential move down and you'll see a whole bunch of names are starting to if they haven't done so already losing the 50 day moving average and really starting uh, to get hit. I mean, look, look, look at, you know, look at names, for example, like Apple. Apple is definitely uh, one of the definitely bigger trades of, of the week. Uh, Apple lost a major, major macro channel that went all the way back uh, to about three weeks from now. It's a big channel here, but more important here, Apple is getting down, right? Apple is getting down to the bottom of the range here, right? You see this whole 34 area, right? 134, that was the October lows. You see Friday's lows, right? That 134 level. If Apple starts confirming down this 134 level, it should get to 132. And if it starts losing 132, uh, it has room down. I mean, look, look at Qualcomm, for example, another stock uh, that lost the 50 day moving average, right? For Thursday lost the 50 day moving average. Friday confirmed it went lower. I mean, there's so many names. If you go through uh, the NASDAQ 100 names, AMD, same thing, AMD. And we'll get to the pivots in a second, but look what happened to AMD. AMD closed Thursday on the on the 50 day moving average. Friday took it out and started going lower. So that's kind of the thesis, guys. The longer we continue to build uh, below the 50 day moving average, um, you know, you're gonna see you're gonna see lower prices. So again, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Okay, I you know I don't, I don't care uh, if you're an investor, trader, whatever the case may be. We've went through this road before, right? We've gone through this road before. If you go through videos just in the last year, what happens when you lose the 50-day moving average? You'll kind of understand what possibly could happen next. Okay, I don't care how much you love your position. If your position starts falling, especially if you're an investor, if your position starts falling below the 50-day moving average. Um, well, again, again, here's my opinion. Here's the facts in front of you. Uh, do with that information what you want. Again, by you t t telling me, turn around and say, well, I'm going to hold it anyway for five years. God bless. You don't need to tell me that. Just hold it, right? You don't need to tell me. I'm telling you what I think is going to happen, uh, you know, as long as we start building below the 50-day moving average. And if you want to hold it, God bless. Who am I to tell you? It's your dime, your dance floor. Do what you want. But again, be prepared, right? Be prepared. Right now, we're in early stages, only day two uh, below the 50-day moving average on the Qs and the IWM, only day one on the spies. So, you know, you have time to kind of put yourself in a position of strength because, again, we're just forming this formation, right? We're just forming this base underneath the 50. And again, who knows? Maybe you get lucky and the bulls have a massive rally on Monday or Tuesday. 
uh, ahead of uh, Christmas, the Santa Claus rally, and we reclaim back the 50-day moving average, that's fantastic, right? Again, for us, it doesn't make a difference. Long, short, as long as there's a trend, as long as there's a range, uh, we're going to be okay. So obviously, going forward into uh, the week, we start the day below the 50 days. So the value, at least for me, at the start of the week is to the downside, and we will reassess uh, look like we do after each uh, trading day. So let's talk about uh, Friday's action. Uh, pretty aggressive stuff. Not everything, right? Not everything died yet, uh, but pretty aggressive stuff here. Uh, Google, not a big move yet. Uh, 90 if it builds below can flush. Went down like 50 cents and came back up into the 90s. Uh, I still like it if it starts confirming down uh, Friday's action, but not a big move yet. Uh, Amazon was putting up a fight, right? Uh, I, if you look at the formation on Amazon, uh, Amazon was putting up a fight. So the pivot here was this 8740s. Uh, you know, I was, we were in this thing for like three hours, four hours, Jesus. It went down like, you know, 40, 50 cents and went back up 40, 50 cents and went back down like 80 cents. And ultimately, you know, I said, you know what, it's getting a little late in the day. It's holding up the range. Let me, let me flatten out this thing. Let me watch this thing for uh, for Monday. But again, if it loses this Bollinger Band, guys, right? If Amazon loses this Bollinger Band, it should get down to this macro level low. And if it loses macro level low, again, just go see any stock that lost this macro level, see what happens next. So I'm still watching that, but not a big move there. On Amazon, uh, AMD, uh, AMD, this is, you know, this is from Thursdays to Friday's continuation. Uh, AMD lost this 87, uh, 67.25 area on Thursday. That was the 50 day moving average. And on Friday, I said, look, if it loses the 66 confirming uh, Thursday's action, it should sell more. Here is AMD, right? Here's AMD. So here's the 67.25. Here's the 66, took that out, went down to 64 and change. Uh, it looks, continues to look lower. Another perfect example of a stock losing the 50 day, Qualcomm 116, if it builds below can flush. Here is Qualcomm. Right here's Qualcomm lost to 116, uh, went down to 113, still looks lower. Uh, Tesla, right? Again, here here's the point. We don't trade, we don't trade the stock. We trade the channel. So here was two two sided trade. Just in case it wants the dead cat bounce, right? Again, you, you want to be prepared for everything. 162 needs to build, and just in case it goes lower, right? Downside channel needs to confirm is 153. So which one do you think it confirmed, right? So here's Tesla, lost the 153 level, uh, traded down to 150, traded down after hours to 149. Uh, as you guys can saw, uh, saw the news report, Elon continues uh, to sell more stock. Again, it just uh, once keeps on selling, it's gonna keep on uh, going lower. But again, nice little move there on Tesla. Apple was definitely, uh, the, you know, definitely one of the trades of the week. Uh, Thursday was destruction. Uh, here was the channel, uh, 141 uh, held three times if it builds below can flush, right? So Apple uh, broke below this 41 level, took out this whole macro channel. And here is Friday's continuation. Phenomenal move yesterday, 136 needs to confirm for more selling. And Apple can confirm that 36, traded down to 33 and change. This thing loses that 33 and change, it goes lower. Really, really great move on Apple. And that is it. So now if you go through your charts for the weekend, you'll see a lot of names setting up the way a lot of these stocks did on the 50 day moving average. Uh, look at Square, right? Let me give you guys a couple of names, right? Look at Square. Square held the 50-day moving average once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Square finally loses the 50-day. It's going to come in. Um, look at Lululemon, right? Lulu had they 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 blew down, blew up on earnings, and now it's just sitting here right on support. You see that, guys? It held support back to back times. This support gets lost. I think there's a shot. It gets down to the 312 level. That looks great. I, I still love Amazon. I just think maybe there was a buyer in the crowd. I'm going to watch Amazon. Uh, I'm going to definitely, definitely watch Amazon. Um, and the point is, the point is, um, the point is if it starts losing the bottom channel, right? If it starts losing the bottom channel here, um, it should go lower. So that's it, guys. We are set up. Uh, we are set up for, uh, we are set up for the day, right? We are set up for the day. We're set up for Monday. Uh, let's see uh, how it plays out, right? For all you guys who are trading, uh, we're trading, right? Where we're trading as well. So guys, have a great holiday session. I love you all. Stay blessed, stay healthy. And God's help, we will see each other on Monday. Take care.